Hello, hello to our students that are joining us um, for our TACAC virtual college fair happening this evening. This is our first session of the evening, and I want to welcome uh, the students, counselors, parents that are joining the room right now. Uh, just a couple of things that I'm going to go over before we pass off to our colleges that are joining us this evening. Um, students, if at any point you have a question, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be when that college is presenting, but any point throughout the session, if you have a question, go ahead and use that Q&A button that's at the bottom of your screen. Students, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Also, just want to remind you that this is the first session of two days of our TACAC Fair. Uh, there are additional sessions uh, after this one and also tomorrow evening. So go ahead and um, sign up for additional sessions as you see interest. And this recording will be available a bit later uh, on strivescan.com slash Texas. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to pass it off to our first presenter of the evening, and that is Langston University. Hello, everybody. I'm Kyle Gregory. I'm a proud 2009 graduate of Langston University. I studied English, marched in the band. I was on the quiz bowl team. I love my experience at Langston. And if you get involved at your university, especially a historically black college, you'll love your experience too. So I've, I've seen firsthand what Langston could do. Langston got me to law school. I've been an attorney eight years now. My true passion is recruitment though. So let's jump right into it. Langston University was founded 10 years before statehood in Oklahoma. We're the only historically black college in the state of Oklahoma. We've got about 1,750 undergraduate students, and this gives us a huge advantage. Being the only HBCU in the state, it opened you, it's a movement right now to, for HBCUs. You saw in the NBA All-Star Game just yesterday, the support HBCUs are starting to get. Well, did you know that Langston University is the third largest recipient of grants in the state of Oklahoma per universities? So that gives us a lot of advantages, and we'll go into those at a bit later. So your housing options, right off the bat, you get to choose your own private room in a four-bedroom apartment. You share a bathroom with one other person. Your two, you move the scholars in, which you see pictured here. Full-size bed, privacy, a larger, uh, larger closet area, and if you have a child, that does not have to stop you from going to college. We've got a two-bedroom apartment just for you, and our honor students get to stay there, too. It's a two bedroom apartment with a washer dryer oven, everything you need in it. And then Young Hall's one of our uh, bargain basement options. You can stay there. It's the largest private room on campus if you get a private room and you still save $800. If you share a room in Young Hall with COVID ends, you save $2,300. Let's keep moving. We got free tutoring in every single class, which means number one, if you're struggling in a subject, that can help get you an A. Number two, that means you can get paid to be the tutor. And we've got group tutoring, one on one tutoring a little bit of everything, supplemental instruction. Also, we've got over 40 organizations on our campus. And if we don't have what you're looking for, you can start it. Our Greek life is vibrant and you can start applying to those universities after you've earned 24 college credits. We've got the Divine Nine, music and band fraternities, eight of the Divine Nine. We've also got Kappa Kappa Psi and multiple other fraternities and sororities on our campus. We're also home to the largest collection of African and African-American literature in the state of Oklahoma and what in the Melvin B. Tolson Black Heritage Center, but let's jump back into these elite internships. Think about it. Did you know that we have internships if you want to go to medical school with Harvard Medical School, with Yale, with Stanford? Did you know we're doing cancer research? We're doing lung cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer. In addition to that, we're working on the Mars landing. When human beings land on Mars,
Kyle, I think we've lost your audio, Kyle. I'm not sure if. Short years. There we so go. Our prices are incredible. 3.0, we waive out of state fees. That means you can attend Langston for less than 15,000 a year or in a private room, you can attend Langston for books included 17,195. We have an elite in, stop what you're doing and look at this real fast. The McCabe scholarship, a 3.5 GPA and a 22 ACT can get you a four year full ride. You can walk out of school with no debt. You can see the rest of these here for yourself, but be sure to check out Thurgood Marshall College Fund in particular and the USDA 1890. They've got elite internships and elite scholarships for our students, including internships at Apple that pay 25,000. Our application's free. If you have a 2.4 grade point average or higher, we will get you admitted. We can get you a scholarship within two days of applying. And don't forget to seek out more information on our full presentation at calendly.com forward slash Langston University. Uh, Langston University, free application, elite internships, small classes, check us out. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Sorry about that sound. We can, I'm sure we can probably get some um, presentation sent in the chat as well, uh, maybe to make up for that a little bit. Oh, audio went out. Um, we are going to pass it off to our next presenter from Oklahoma Baptist University. Awesome. Can everybody hear me? Great. So I'm going to go ahead and share this and get started. So uh, welcome. My name is Josh Pumphrey, and I'm a recruiter for the state of Texas from Oklahoma Baptist University. And uh, here, as you can see here in our first slide, we are future shapers. The goal is that you'll come to OBU and we want to equip you from our faculty, staff, and administrative perspective. We want, we want to equip you to become future shapers. And we believe that OBU has the education to be able to provide that for you. You see here our mission statement, as a Christian liberal arts university, which we are, OBU transforms lives by equipping students to pursue academic excellence, integrate faith with all areas of knowledge, engage a diverse world, and live worthy of the high calling of God in Christ. OBU is unapologetically a liberal, a uh, Christian liberal arts university. We want to educate you wholly as a person, and we believe that faith can and should be the foundation of that education. Uh, OBU, we are in Oklahoma. We are located 35 miles east of Oklahoma City, uh, which is the state capital. Uh, we're about 90 miles from Tulsa and about 250 miles from Dallas. And since a lot of you might be asking, we are about seven hours from San Antonio, eight hours from Houston-ish, give or take, um, if that's where you might be in the state of Texas. Uh, OBU, we actually do have two campuses. We have our Gold Campus, which is our primary campus. You can see up here, uh, Rayleigh Chapel, which is a beautiful, iconic building uh, on our campus. That's where all the chapel services will be. And then we have a recently acquired Green Campus uh, that's about 73 acres. It's a little bit smaller, and it's about a mile down the road. And what that means is that at OBU, there's room for growth. Currently, we mostly use our gold campus because the green campus was a recent donation uh, that we're trying to figure out the best way for the university to use. Um, but we do have that as a resource so that we can grow. Uh, and so you'll, that's exciting to know as someone who might be considering getting their education at OBU. Our average class size is about 20 students. Uh, with a 14 to one student to faculty ratio, you're gonna be seen and known by your professors. They're gonna invite you to their house for dinner. They're gonna uh, go to church with you. And some of them might ask you to watch their kids and you're gonna engage with them. And they really do care about you. They'll see you and they'll want to know how you're doing. Uh, when you miss class, they'll call and check on you, um, not to call you out or anything negative like that, but it's because they genuinely care. Uh, I had a professor one time as an alum of OBU uh, she called because I missed class and I was sick and she offered to bring me chicken noodle soup. And that's just the kind of care that you get when you have these smaller class sizes and you're more than just a number, uh, you're a name and you're a person and you're seen by your professors. At OBU, we want you to get involved. We have a lot of different things uh, to get involved in. We have social clubs, which are similar to uh, Greek life at other universities, um, but they're not Panhellenic. And so they're a little bit different with that. We have to name them a little bit differently. 
Uh, club sports and intramurals, if you're an athlete, but you might not be wanting to play college sports, but you still want to be active, those are great ways to get involved. Uh, our club sports do compete against other schools. And so we have volleyball, basketball, soccer, any club sport that you can uh, get involved in. Ping pong, we have a disc golf team. Um, you can, we'll compete intercollegiately. Uh, and then we also have intramurals, which is a great way for anybody. We have competitive and recreational intramurals for anybody to blow off steam. Uh, we have fine arts that you can get involved in. So if you're maybe not a music major, but you like to sing, you can join our chorale and you can get scholarships for that. Uh, and we have a lot of different ministry opportunities because, as I said, we are unapologetically Baptist uh, Christians. And many different opportunities for you to get involved in, 80 plus different student organizations. And the good thing about OBU is if there's something that we don't have a club for, you can start one. And all you need to do is find a group of people who want to do it and a faculty sponsor, and then you can start that club. Uh, we want to give you the freedom to do that. Being a Christ-centered university, uh, OBU actually is the number one center, sender to the International Mission Board. So if that's something that you are interested in, uh, OBU is a great place to study under the right people and under the best people to be able to send out and do the world uh, and impact it for the glory of God. Um, with that, there are different requirements, such as attending 96 chapels throughout your time at OBU, um, because as you saw earlier in our mission statement, Christ is the center of what we do here. We want to integrate faith with all areas of knowledge. That is both in the classroom and holistically outside of the classroom. Uh, the value of OBU, 100% of students receive a minimum scholarship of, uh, it's normally 7,000, but I'm sorry for my mistake, it's actually 9,000 dollars that students receive a minimum scholarship of uh, and it can go all the way up to 14 uh, depending on your GPA and we even have opportunities for full tuition scholarships uh, with higher test scores and different factors that might uh, come to play in that. We also offer all federal aid. We have an OBU Bison grant that we can grant students based on the information we get from the FAFSA. Uh, there are different talent-based awards like I said through sports uh, full tuition scholarships, and we also have uh, church staff dependent scholarships, so if your parents work at a church, and then also uh, if you attend a church, we have a church partnership scholarship that you can uh, partner, that your church can send money to OBU on your behalf, and we will match that. And I'm guessing I'm out of time, and so I want to leave you with uh, this, that we're 99% of our graduates find a job or enter the grad school of their choice uh, within six months of graduation. And so going to OBU, as much as it, it'll be a good time, you will be prepared for the world uh, beyond education. So thank you so much. We want you to come be a future shaper with us. Thank you so much to Oklahoma Baptist. We will now move on to Oklahoma City University. Thank you so much. Good evening. My name is Monica Brown. I'm the senior admissions counselor at Oklahoma City University and a proud alumni from their School of Dance and Entertainment. To start our presentation off, um, Oklahoma City University is a small private liberal arts university in the heart of Oklahoma City. We are located about five to 10 minutes from all, the, all of the action downtown. I'm from Texas originally and thought Oklahoma City was going to be in the middle of cows and cornfields. So if you're worried about that, have no fear, Oklahoma City University and Oklahoma City in general has a ton of opportunities for you to get involved, um, as well as explore the local areas. We have a student population of about 1,600 undergraduate students, and about 1,400 graduate students. We inhabit our main campus in Oklahoma City. We have a law school campus in downtown Oklahoma City and a nursing campus in Duncan, Oklahoma. We are United Methodist affiliated. That being said, you do not have to be United Methodist to come to the university. We accept all students of all faith backgrounds, but if you are an active member of your United Methodist Church, please let us know so we do have some scholarship opportunities for you. Talking about our academics, um, being a smaller university, we have the opportunity for our professors to get to know every single student individually and give you an individualized education. On average, our class sizes are between 10 and 17 students per class, even your first year here on campus. All of our classes are taught by professors, no graduate students or teaching assistants, and 78% of our faculty members hold the highest degree in their field of choice. And talking about our student engagement opportunities, we have over 80 student organizations on campus. Those range from Greek life to faith-based organizations to hobbies and clubs to truly anything our students can think of. Um, we're big on performing arts at OCU. We have top tier performing arts um, 
programs. And so our students are going out into Oklahoma City and the surrounding states to perform professionally, as well as we have senior showcases for our students to present their talent um, in front of casting directors, agents, and industry professionals. We also have over 70 clinical sites for our nursing majors, as well as a full simulation lab for our students to work on. Those robot dummies bleed, they give birth, their eyes light up, they scream, they cry. Super great opportunities for our nursing majors, as well as a ton of different faculty-led and student-led study abroad opportunities and intramural sports. We also have over 22 varsity sports that are in the NAIA Division of Athletics. We have the most national championships out of any NAIA school. Um, we have the only women's wrestling team in the state of Oklahoma, and our rowing team practices at the Oklahoma City Boathouse, where the Olympic and Paralympic rowers practice. Talking about our student experiences and what our students are doing inside the classroom and outside of the classroom, the top pictures are some of our student experiences. Our mass communication majors are getting hands-on learning their first year on campus. Our game design and animation students have access to a full motion capture lab. And our music students, even during the time of COVID, are having the opportunity to practice for our ensembles and performances. The bottom picture shows some fun things that happen on campus. Christian Chenoweth, who is an OCU alum and a huge Broadway star, um, is doing Zoom classes and Zoom master classes with our students. In Oklahoma City, we have all four seasons. So if you've never experienced snow, you definitely can um, in Oklahoma City. And then the right picture is of our homecoming, which is where all of our student organizations compete against each other. Um, and that's at Lip Sync, which is a 10 minute mashup that each student organization gets to create. Talking about costs and scholarships, um, being a private institution, we have no difference between in-state and out-of-state tuition. So what you see on the screen is what every single student pays at OCU. Um, we do have different housing options for freshmen and transfer students and have guaranteed housing for all four years. So no matter what phase you come in to at OCU, you have a place on our campus. Talking about application process, um, our application has many different pathways. So if you have a test score, I know with COVID that's been a little bit more difficult, or if you don't have a test score and you have a class rank, we can admit you that way. Or if you have neither a class rank or a test score, we can admit you through our holistic review pathway. One of the big things that we like to advertise is we allow our students to submit new test scores until July of their senior year, and we do super score. And on the screen, you can see all of the materials that are needed to complete out your application. Talking about our scholarships, we have first time freshman scholarships based on either your cumulative high school GPA or your cumulative high school GPA and your ACT or SAT test score. Whichever one is higher, that is what we'll award to you for all four years at OCU, and they're stackable on top of our other scholarships at the university. You can find the link okcu.edu slash scholarships to find out more. And for students in the performing arts, we offer talent scholarships based off auditions, interviews, and our portfolio reviews. All of the auditions for fall 2021 are virtual. If you scan the QR code, you can find out more about how to register for your audition or your program of choice. We also offer athletic scholarships and talent scholarships for students interested in visual arts um, and film production. We also offer a ton of different competitive scholarships based on a student's application for admission, based on um, test score, based on activities you're involved in in high school, based off religious affiliation for students who are interested in religion or who are United Methodist affiliated. And that's it for me. Quick, simple, easy six minutes. Um, if you have any additional questions, I work with all students from the Houston area or any 77 zip code um, students from Houston. And Leslie Welch is our other DFW coordinator who works with the rest of the state of Texas. Um, and you can visit us, uh, schedule a meeting with me, and we hope to see you in Oklahoma City soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Oklahoma City. We will now pass it off to our next presenter from Oklahoma State University. Hi. Can, is Kara, can you give me the thumbs up to make sure I've got the right screen on for me? Awesome, thank you very much. Welcome from Oklahoma State University. My name is Suzanne Edwards. I am one of many admissions counselors at Oklahoma State University. And something that Oklahoma State does that we um, kind of feel is special for our admissions process is every student out there applying to OSU is gonna have their own admissions counselor to help them through the process. So how do you figure out who that person is? So the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna go on our website and you're gonna look at the um, 
address that you have there, the okokla.st find my counselor link. And um, let me back up and say that from our homepage of OSU, the top right search bar, you can find anything on our website. So sometimes it's just easier to go there and type in find my counselor. So what my Texas students are going to do, you're going to go to that map you're going to find on our website, you're going to click on Texas, you're going to drop down in the menu, you're going to find your actual high school, and that's going to tell you who your admissions counselor is that's going to work with you through the entire process. For example, I live and work in the DFW area, so I work with students in the northwest quadrant of the Metroplex. So hopefully you can find me if I'm your counselor. We all have uh, phone numbers published in. I like to let my students know that those are cell phones. So if you prefer to text us, please feel free to do that. We just wanna make sure that we are able to connect with you in any way possible. So where is OSU? What is OSU? We are in Stillwater, Oklahoma, which is a small rural community, which is a true college feel. The great thing about that is you're gonna have a very safe home feel at OSU, but 60 miles one direction, you're gonna have Oklahoma City and 60 miles the other direction, you're gonna have Tulsa. So you're gonna have a great experience in terms of having the best of both worlds. Your home is gonna feel comfortable, it's gonna feel familiar. And if you are just itching to get out and get a little bit of city exposure, you can do that too. The population is still water as you see on your screen right there. It's just over 50,000 students, excuse me, 50,000 residents and the students make up almost half of that. So it's a true, true college town. Founded in 1890 with over 500 student organizations. So you're gonna find something for you in terms of social and activities to do outside of the classroom. Let's talk about inside the classroom. So at a glance, we have five colleges. So based on the major that you select, that's gonna place you in a college. The great thing about the admissions process at OSU is that when you apply for admissions, you're applying as a general admission student and once admitted, you choose the college that you're going to study in based on your major. If you're not sure what your major is going to be, we have a tool that you can see on the slide there with the web address to kind of do a little survey, a quiz, so to speak, to help you narrow down based on your interest, based on your strengths, where you might find that you're going to be successful studying on our campus. But we've got something for everyone with over 200 majors and over 300 minors to add to that. So this slide is kind of cool. I like sharing this because it's just a, a visual glimpse into Oklahoma State University. And one thing that we're very proud of is while we are NCAA Division I athletics, and we obviously have a lot of funds for our athletic programs and our athletic facilities, we are equally as invested in our facilities and our programs from the academic side. So what you see here, I'll just talk, start at the top left. The top left is the Spear School of Business building. It is a uh, building that's been open since October of 2019. So a very new building that has a lot of resources for our students to use in terms of career finding, resume writing, interview rooms. Um, we have a, a, a floor which represents the New York Stock Exchange for our business students to actually get in and trade um, as if they're a real day trader. Top middle is the student union. It is the largest student union in the nation, we're very proud of that. And one thing that I like about our union is it's a true hub of campus. It's not a pass through, it's where students really gather, they study, they eat, Chick-fil-A of course is there, um, coffee shop is there, but you'll pass through there and you'll see students with their laptops open studying and making that one of their second homes on campus. Top right is our Endeavor Lab for our engineering students. That is also a rather new building. One thing we're very proud about that building, it is 100% for our undergraduate students. So it gives our undergraduate students a chance to be hands-on from the very beginning of their process at OSU. Down in the bottom left is our Ferguson Ag of College. That is a rendering of a building that is breaking ground this spring. So we're very excited about that. And the bottom right is our McKnight Performing Arts Center that opened just over a year ago when we have uh, partnered with the New York Philharmonic to um, present and give students opportunities to explore theater and music there. And then in the bottom middle is Old Central. That's the very first building built on OSU's campus and houses our Honors College. Um, homecoming is a flagship activity at, at OSU. You'll hear a lot about that as you go through the homecoming, excuse me, through the admissions process. And since I'm watching my time, I'm going to click through so we can get to that. So if you have your phone with you, you might want to just take a, a screenshot of this right here. This is just going to give you the highlights of what you're going to want to make sure that you submit for our application. It is an OSU specific application. We do not use the Common App or the Apply Texas. And the reason for that is your admissions application is your scholarship application as well. 
There's a couple different ways you can be admitted to OSU. On the right-hand side, we have assured criteria. If you meet one of those bullet points, you're automatically admitted to OSU. If that doesn't describe you, we're gonna look at all of the components of the pieces that are on the previous slide and give you an opportunity to have a comprehensive review to be given admissions qualifications. Scholarships. So OSU is an out-of-state school for our Texas students, but we have very lucrative scholarships. Our assured scholarships there in the left-hand column are going to be in the form of tuition waivers. Though are, those are four-year awards, so very uh, worth looking towards earning as a high school student. Partnered scholarships are things like national merit, and on the right-hand side, you're going to see competitive scholarships, which can stack on top of our assured waivers. This is a, a, a screen that just kind of outlines those tuition waivers that I referred to that are the most lucrative for our out-of-state students. Again, the four-year awards, which can get you very close to in-state tuition. Housing at OSU, you are required to live on campus as a freshman, but you have a lot of options, including apartment styles or suites. And there we go, I got to the end. <laughs> Hope I made it in my time. Uh, find your admissions counselor, find me, or you can use the information here on your slide to start at the admissions office and we'll get you connected with your counselor. Thanks so much. Excellent, thank you, Oklahoma State. We will now pass it off to our presenter from the University of Tulsa. Awesome, thank you so much. My name is Allie Landis and I am your um, regional representative for the University of Tulsa. So I am actually based in Dallas um, and have another colleague based up here. And then we have our colleague in Houston um, and I'll put my information in the chat, but you can reach out to me and I'm happy to connect you with either of my colleagues. And um, so just some quick facts about the University of Tulsa. We are a small private liberal arts school located in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and um, you're listening to all the Oklahoma schools, so we love our Texans, and um, Tulsa is about a four-hour drive from Dallas, about a seven-hour drive from Austin, and about an eight-hour drive from Houston. Uh, we are small. We have around 3,000 undergrads and around 1,000 grad students on campus. About half of our students are from Oklahoma, about 37% are out of state, and about 13% are international, and so what this really means is that you are going to probably see people that look like you and think like you and speak like you on campus, but then you're definitely going to run into people and be in classes with people who don't look like you and don't think like you and don't speak like you. And that's something that we think is really important and something that we pride ourselves on. Um, we have small class sizes at TU. Our average class size is going to be around 20. And then you can see here we have between a 10 to 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So you're going to get really personalized attention and um, you're going to have discussion and debate style learning environment versus larger lecture halls. So we love the city of Tulsa. It's a really cool city and um, it has over 50 miles of hiking and biking trails. If you like to be outside, like someone mentioned earlier, Oklahoma does have four seasons Although recently in Texas, we've definitely um, been experiencing um, the four seasons with the ice storm, and then it's been beautiful lately. And um, but yes, you're going to get that in Oklahoma in non-COVID times. We have festivals that take place every year in Tulsa, and um, we are a traditional self-contained green campus. And um, so you kind of get that traditional college experience, but we're only about three miles from downtown. And um, we also have minor league baseball and hockey is a great city for music so fingers crossed that those um concerts are going to come back soon we've had everyone from george Strait to lady gaga to elton john perform in tulsa so lots to do um, for our academic programs, we are best known for engineering. Um, we have petroleum, mechanical, computer, electrical, chemical engineering. Um, we're also well known for our biology and pre-med track, computer science, nursing, business. We also have some unique programs, such as our computer simulation and gaming, as well as cybersecurity. We also have a cyber core program that trains students in cybersecurity and cyber defense, and 75% of those students actually go on to work for the CIA, the NSA, Department of Defense, or NASA, which is pretty cool. So if that's something that you're interested in, definitely a great place for you. 
We do a really good job getting our students jobs after they graduate. That's actually something that we really pride ourselves in at the University of Tulsa. We have a 93% job placement rate within six months of graduation. So 93% of our students are in jobs within six months. We work with over 225 companies and organizations um, that come to our campus to recruit our students for paid internships and full-time employment opportunities. We host at least five college fairs a year. And those are still happening right now. They're happening virtually, but we're still getting those students connected. We have a really vibrant student life at TU. We have 17 division one sports and we are a part of the American Athletic Conference and we are the smallest D1 football school and proud of it. It just brings a lot of life and school spirit to campus. And we have a great homecoming at we're supposed to have, um, or I guess the legend is that our homecoming bonfire can be seen from space. Um, and so it really is a fun time. We also have over 200 different clubs and organizations, including campus ministries. About 20% of our students are involved in Greek life. And um, if you're interested in music, we have bands and um, vocal groups that you can be a part of, pre-professional groups, you name it. And um, we really have it. Our students are super active. I think something that I always say is that to you, you have all these opportunities that a larger school has, um, but they're so accessible. They're at your fingertips. There's actually opportunities for you to start research this summer before your freshman year. Um, and again, hopefully um, next summer, we actually have a program where you can study abroad the summer before your freshman year and meet other incoming freshmen. Um, and so some really, really cool opportunities since we are a smaller school. Um, a couple of other things that I wanted to mention that I think makes TU really unique is our Student Success Center. So every incoming freshman is paired with a student success coach who is a professional on our campus who's going to meet with you throughout your freshman year and um, to check in and see how's it going? How are you transitioning? How can we help you and make sure you're getting the resources you need at TU? Um, and we want you to transition not just academically, but also um, mentally, physically, financially. We care about all of those things. We are open for campus visits, so we would love to have you come visit our campus and um, definitely have safety precautions in place. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to mention is that we do provide scholarships. Every admitted student receives some sort of scholarship, um, so don't let costs be something that stops you from applying. And um, we'd love to connect with you, and thanks so much for your time. Excellent, thank you so much, Tulsa. We will now pass it off to the University of Oklahoma. Great, thank you. Let me share my screen. All right, can we see it? Good to go, awesome, cool. <clears throat> well, my name is Hannah Harrell. I am the Central Texas Regional Admissions Counselor. Um, for the University of Oklahoma located in Austin, Texas. I'm a recent grad from OU. I graduated in May. Um, and so I just decided I loved it so much that they were going to pay me to live in enemy territory to um, get students up to OU. So, um, oh, my slide's not going. There we go. Um, so at OU, we have 22,000 students, um, undergraduate students from all 50 states and 125 countries. Um, we have two campuses, our Norman campus, which is just 30 minutes south of Oklahoma City um, and about an hour north of the border. If you don't know where Oklahoma is, it's on top of Texas, where it's supposed to be. Just kidding, we love our Texas students so much. Um, and we also have our other campus at the, um, in Oklahoma City, it's our health sciences campus. And um, we are a tier one institution. The Carnegie Foundation considers OU a tier one research institution, which means that we are among the most active research universities in the nation. Um, and that's something that we really take pride on. There's many opportunities to get involved within different research um, organizations and such. At OU, we have over 170 plus undergraduate degrees. Um, if you visit ou.mymajors.com, you can view these as well as be matched with a major based on your interests and talents. It's kind of like a little aptitude test. Um, I took it before I attended OU and um, it led me to different classes that I was interested in. Um, one really cool thing about OU is that we do not declare um, 
we do not require freshmen to declare a major. Um, so when you apply, um, you do not have to say, oh, I'm going to be this major, I'm going to be that major. Um, you, you can come in and talk to your one-on-one -on -one academic advisor that you're assigned to um, and discuss all of your options and what you're passionate about and talk through um, different options before you decide to declare a major. Um, at OU, we have over 550 student organizations. This is everything from professional groups, student life groups, religious groups. And um, we have many jobs, student jobs that are available to students um, on campus, as well as Greek life. And we also have many multicultural organizations and student life as well, um, which we definitely take pride in the fact that all of our students um, are able to find a place and a home on campus. And if you don't find an organization that you want to be a part of, um, like many other um, colleges, you're able to make your own. So all you need is 10 students students and an advisor, which faculty or staff member, um, and you're good to go. So like I said, we're located in Norman. Um, it's about 30, 45 minutes south of Oklahoma City, depending on the day, um, and then about an hour north of the border. Um, and so we are the city of festivals. Um, a fun fact about Norman, um, when the stadium is at full capacity on a football game, on a game day, um, we become the fourth largest city in Oklahoma, which is kind of cool. Um, we have everything from the Chocolate Festival, Norman City Music Festival, um, and many, many more that our students love to attend. Study abroad. Um, opportunities exist in over 80 countries and 200 cities across the world. Um, we have over 135 countries represented within our student body, um, and then around 41% of our student body actually um, receives an opportunity to study abroad, which is great. We have two study abroad centers, one in Arezzo, Italy, and one in Puebla, Mexico. These are both OU institutions, OU faculty and staff, OU tuition and fees. Um, so it's affordable and possible for you to, um, to study abroad, which is really great. And also, if you want to attend somewhere else, or if you want to go to a different country, you can definitely speak with our um, abroad advisors, because like I said, opportunities exist all over the world. Awesome, applying. So our, um, our application actually opens August 1st, if you're a junior. If you're a senior, you can still apply. Go ahead and you can apply over these three different platforms um, through OU, um, our website, and the Common App or the Coalition App. Doesn't matter how you apply. Um, either way, I'm gonna get. We're all gonna get the same information. Um, and so, please, you know, if you're uh, applying to other schools, feel free to use the the other apps as well. Um, we are test optional for the next five years. We still encourage you to submit a test score um, to ensure accurate course placement as well as uh, maximize scholarship opportunities. Um, we are test optional, meaning you don't have to turn in an ACT or SAT um, to be considered for acceptance. Visiting, we are having in-person tours um, right now. You can schedule those through April, I believe. Um, our May and summer dates will come out very soon. Um, but we also have virtual resources. So we have virtual tours as well, led by actual students on campus. We also have academic resources online. So if you're interested in a specific college or major or organization, if you go to this website right here, um, you can look at all of those information sessions that we host virtually, um, and they're available for you. You can also schedule a virtual one-on-one -on -one with your counselor. Um, I'm located in Central Texas, so I have Austin, San Antonio, this kind of area. And um, we have multiple counselors in Dallas and in Houston. Um, so feel free free to go on our website and find your counselor um, their email and their phone number will be on there. Feel free to text them, call them. And we are here to serve you and help you through this um, process. And so we love, um, we love to help our students. So please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. Um, but like I said, my name is Hannah Harrell and uh, I serve for the University of Oklahoma as your admissions counselor. So um, thank you for joining me today and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Great, thank you so much, Oklahoma. Um, to all our presenters, um, we do have just a couple of minutes left in the session. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop up a question on the screen. Uh, we have about time for about maybe 45 seconds um, for you to all tell us an interesting um, or fun fact about your school. Um, so we'll start with Langston. Well, Langston University is not named after Langston Hughes. We get that all the time. We're named after John Mercer Langston, who basically founded Howard's Law School. We're also pretty much the furthest HBCU to the West. Excellent. Cool facts. Oklahoma Baptist. Hmm, I would say, one, so Oklahoma Baptist University, we're, our mascot is the bison. Um, we actually, in the early 1900s, and I think either the 1920s or the 1930s, we actually had a live bison on campus for a couple of years. It's not there anymore. 
for <laughs> probably obvious reasons. Very cool. All right, Oklahoma City. So at Oklahoma City University, we are a huge performing arts school. So one of our claim to fame is we have the most Radio City Rockets of our alumni out of any university in the world. Wow. All right, Oklahoma State. Uh, so I guess I'll probably go back to our homecoming being one of our flagship events and our um, our oh gosh what's the word the, the in our in our parade our help me with the word I'm trying to think of our master of the parade is typically some a, a notable alum so we've had Barry Sanders come back and be the masters of our parade um, we always tend to get somebody that um, you know is very relatable with our students and this year was our hundredth homecoming celebration but due to COVID we postponed it we didn't cancel it we postponed it so anybody coming to OSU in the fall will get to participate in that and if you're not at OSU yet you can certainly come anyway so hope to see you in the fall and University of Tulsa. So we like to say that blue and yellow, which are our two colors, make green. And because all of our fountains on campus are run out of recycled water. And so in the summertime, when we have less students on campus, um, they'll either be smaller or they'll run less because they don't run unless water is being used. So fun fact. Interesting. And University of Oklahoma. Um, so one cool thing about OU that um, I really like is that OU is one of the first um, public universities in the country to build residential colleges for upperclassmen and women, actually. So it's something that I really like to take part on is that empowerment. All right, excellent. Um, I did see a couple of questions go down in there um, for OU. Just know if you did ans um, ask a question and maybe if um, Hannah doesn't get to it um, before the meeting ends here, um, it does get sent on to everyone. So just you can follow up that way. Um, but I do want to um, set, let our um, students know just a couple of things before you exit that meeting. Um, when you exit, there will be a quick only four question survey that will appear. Um, students, it really helps us to build new programming or uh, tailor things the way that you would like them for all of these virtual events we're going through. Um, so please answer that for us. Of course, there are more sessions happening um, just in about 15 minutes and then also tomorrow night. So sign up for those sessions. And again, this recording will be available at strivescan.com slash Texas. I want to thank all of our presenters um, for being here this evening and sharing all of their knowledge. Um, thanks so much, everyone, and have a nice night. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye.